One part of the challenge is already quite clear, I think, to most. How do we sustain this very personal sense of belongingness as we continue to grow? Last week, I was sitting back in the queue after the passing of the piece, and the music had begun, and the person sitting next to me and I noticed there was this buzz in the air. People were still laughing and still softly talking to one another, even though the service was moving on. And we were kind of wondering about that, and she said to me, I think people just need to be touched. We need to be physically present to one another. We need this face-to-face -face personal connection. We need to be known by name. And when we experience it, as Judd says, it bubbles over. I also wonder how we will ensure that all of us are in the loop as the loop gets bigger. I'm reminded of the day a couple of months ago when Judd had us make a circle around the sanctuary and we suddenly realized that we weren't going to fit. And it was a pretty weird looking circle. Technology is another case in point. How can we use technology as a supplement to or a tool for community building without confusing it with the community itself? For example, Facebook keeps us connected during the week, which is awesome. And it's important to recognize that Facebook is an expression of the community. It's not the community itself. In fact, some of us here are not Facebookers <laughs> and not connected to the electronic network. And a challenge for our future will be to maintain and increase our inclusivity, inviting in those who are different from us, and ensuring that everyone feels a sense of belonging. <laughs> and an even bigger challenge is where we go from here. Judd has begun to unpack this question in his sermon series on the book of Acts, and many of our open pulpit preachers have brought this question to us over the last few months. As he talks about fishing together, Loeb describes first creating a cohesive community and then involving its members in larger public issues. And this may be where CCC is now. Loeb says, first the fishermen learned to work together, then to reach beyond their own ranks. Building their associations' internal cohesion made it easier for them to tackle difficult issues later on. I think Judd's picture of individuals connecting to individuals, groups connecting to groups, communities connecting to communities, may be pointing to this reality. We may be arriving at a time when our own internal cohesion is pointing us toward a new place in God's big picture. As I read today's scripture, I noticed that there are several parts of Jesus' commissioning of the disciples. It sounds a lot to me like our get out with. Listen to it. First, he calls us as fish, he calls us fishers of men and women. Go out, draw others in, cast your net where I'm showing you. Second, he says, come here. Come to me. Let me feed you. Be with one another in small and intimate spaces. Share a meal. Talk to one another. Give each other support for the journey ahead. Third, he asks us if we love him. He calls for a personal and public commitment. And for every time we fail or deny him, three times for Simon Peter, he asks again, do you love me? And he gives us an opportunity to try again, to be healed, and to experience his unconditional love. Love. And finally, he commissions us to take care of his flock, to tend his flock. Tend. Such a warm, gentle, loving, tender word. And by Jesus' own example, we know that when he says, My flock, he means everyone. We heard a long list last week. He means especially those who are marginalized, outcasts, hurting, and discarded by society. And I think this last bit is the most exciting and the most difficult challenge. If we believe, like Paul Lowe, like Jesus, that cohesive communities are called to reach beyond themselves, then what does that mean for us? When Judd draws those pictures, 
pictures with all kinds of lines coming out of our little circle in the middle and connecting with all those other circles? What does that mean for us? Lowe says, the most serious drawback of addressing only issues of immediate interest to our particular villages is parochialism, which can easily become complacency. We need to work with members of other villages if we're to meet our most fundamental challenges, like securing adequate employment, housing, and education for all. This means we need to reach beyond the domains where we feel most at home. Too often, our communities are separated from those of our fellow citizens. We need ways to leap the cultural, political, and economic firebreaks that stop the spark of moral commitment from spreading too widely and keep our social concerns safely private. When social justice groups form from widely divergent economic circumstances and they begin to form alliances with one another, they gain both political strength and a sense of each other's morals. I love this image of jumping over the firebreak. Sparks leaping over the gap for both sides, connecting with one another, and consuming the spaces between us and dividing us with a fire of passion and love and the spirit of shalom. Individually and collectively, we're already well on our way on this journey. Over the summer, Katie Joe made a long list of ways that CCC embodies Jesus' call to serve. And like me, I assume that each of you has already experienced the challenges and rewards of service and advocacy. And this leads to another challenge. Here's Mobigan. He says, I suspect that the best responses to many of our society's ills may be local and decentralized approaches that draw upon such spiritual values as love, generosity, a willingness to listen, and the capacity to see a divine spark and even the most desperate and self-destructive of our fellow communities. Yet most of the one-to-one -one approaches require institutional support. So, how should we proceed if we wish to act on a more personal level, yet make our individual actions more productive on a larger scale? The answer, he says, is to move together beyond our cocoon never underestimating the potential social power of our culture's existing villages. And that brings us back to the end of the song. Back to the words of Jesus. Back to the disciples, challenged to do something new. Back to the beginning of the Book of Acts. And we know the rest of their story. They became the church. So, what will be the rest of our story? After we come to this table together today, where will we go from here?